Hello everybody, I'm Jessica River and today we are going to be talking about flowers in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Okay, so recently I have been trying to get all of the flowers in Animal Crossing New Horizons and it takes a while and there are actually quite a few flowers in this game compared to the previous Animal Crossing games. There are lilies, roses, cosmos, oh god, I'm not gonna say these right, hyathens, tulips, mums, windflowers, and pansies. So there are eight flower types in total. Okay, so there are five ways to get flowers in the game. There are your primary flowers, which spawn on the upper levels of your island when you first start the game. You can find your primary and secondary flowers also from randomly generated islands that you can go to using your Nook Miles. You can also buy flower seed bags from stores. You can visit someone else's island and have them give you flowers. And lastly, you can wire the flowers that you already have, and they will have a chance of spawning more flowers next to them the next day. You water flowers with a watering can. There are several different types of watering cans. A flimsy watering can will water one space at a time and will break after about 40 uses. A regular watering can has a larger range and lasts longer, around 100 uses. A golden watering can has the longest range and will last around 200 uses. Flowers can also be watered by rain. Now the best flower guide that I have found is this one from Reddit by Kara Sophie, which I'll put a link to down below. This guide basically goes over how to get uh, each flower at the highest percentage. Now, there are other ways to get these flowers um, with different percentages, and we know that because people have been data mining uh, this information, but this is the uh, highest percentage of each way to get the different types of hybrid flowers. So if you look at the lilies, you'll see that a red flower and a yellow flower will make an orange flower, a red flower and a white flower will make a pink flower, and two red flowers will make a black flower. However, if you come down to these roses, you'll notice something different. And I'm talking specifically about these red roses at the bottom here. If you'll notice, they have a green background instead of a orange one. And this is because they are considered a special flower. Now, special flowers are flowers that you do not buy or plant from bags. Because you can buy bags of flower seeds and then plant those, um, but these have to be already crossbred. So to get these special red flowers, you have to crossbreed a white rose with an orange rose, and then you get this special hybrid red rose. And if you have two hybrid red roses, you can make a blue rose. And the blue rose, I believe, is one of the hardest flowers to get, if not the hardest flower to get. So I really like this guide here. Um, it's very simple, and if you just need a quick look at what to do to get these types of flowers, this is a great guide for that. However, if you want to know more about crossbreeding flowers, there is a lot more to go over than just this guide here. So let's go to the next guide. Okay, so this website has a lot more information about uh, hybrid flowers and how they are created. And we're gonna talk first about uh, cloning or flower duplication. Now this guide was created by several different people and it says A, C, and H hybrid guide, flower duplication guide. Much like the tango, it takes two flowers to breed. However, single flowers can have their own fun too. A lonesome flower can clone itself to create a dance partner for tomorrow. These are the two ways flowers can reproduce. Two flowers of the same species breeding or a flower cloning itself. Once a flower reproduces through either 
of these methods, that flower will not reproduce again for the day. Flowers also prefer to breed than to clone, so if there's a flower of the same species nearby who has not yet reproduced today, the flower that's reproducing will breed with that partner, and neither flower will reproduce again for the day. This means that for cloning to occur, a reproducing flower must have no neighbors of the same species that haven't reproduced for the day. And if you look at these little charts here, you will see how these flower setups work. So if a flower is single by itself, it will only clone. And if it is uh, by itself or not next to a flower of the same species, like not right next to it, it will only clone. Types of flowers that will never clone are flowers that are right next to each other that are the same. So if you have two uh, purple flowers right next to each other, they will never clone. Can do both. So if you see these patterns here have multiple flowers of the same type. Some of them like the ones with yellow backgrounds that are connected to each other are able to crossbreed with one another. While the ones that I've highlighted in pink are more likely to clone themselves. Since flowers can only crossbreed with a pair of two, the flower without a partner will clone itself instead. Flowers when reproducing a hybrid or a clone can spawn that offspring in a one tile radius around the partner flower, even in diagonals. Keep that in mind. Flowers need to be touching, even in diagonals, to be able to breed together as well. The flowers that do pair up are random and can be different every time. Better method than 5x5 five five for order of planting. So if you look at these patterns here, you can see some of the best ways to breed or clone flowers. Okay, now we're going to look at this guide, and here we are going to be looking at roses specifically because they are some of the hardest flowers to breed and have the most colors out of all of the other flowers. So this is a CNH hybrid guide, Blue Roses Breeding Methods. Each flower has its own genetic code programmed into the game that controls its color, what offspring it can breed. Two flowers of the same color can have different genes that are impossible to see in game. However, planting seeds creates flowers with the same genes every time. Breeding flowers together from seed flowers can create different genes in offspring, which can be control generation to generation to create blue roses. The key in the bottom left corner shows the symbols to use to differentiate seed flowers and various hybrid flowers. So if you look at this chart, you'll notice that there are different symbols next to these uh, different colored roses. If you look at the top right, these two white roses both have white seed bags next to them. However, this purple rose has a green star next to it. And if we come down a little further, we'll notice that another purple rose has a red star next to it. And if we go over to the left a little to these orange roses, you'll see that they have an island symbol next to them. So we're gonna go over what each one of those symbols mean. So the seed bags means that you plant those flowers from seeds. The stars are different forms of breeding and the island symbol means that you get that flower from an island. So, each flower has its own code based off of whether you plant it from seeds, whether you got it from breeding, or whether you got it from an island. And by breeding different flowers together, you get different codes as well. So, you can see this purple flower has two codes. It has a green code, which is RRYY capital W capital WSS, whereas this red code is RR capital Y R capital W, capital W, S, S. And this purple rose is created from two different types of breeding. So you get the green code by breeding two white roses together, which were planted from seeds, and you get the red star rose from crossbreeding a white flower that was crossbred from a purple rose and a yellow rose, and a purple rose that was crossbred between the two white roses to get this red star purple rose. And as you can see, the red star purple rose has a higher percentage than the green star purple rose. 
That means that the rose with the highest percentage has a higher chance of spawning in game. All right, so let's talk a little bit about these island roses here. You can only find these special orange roses on island tours if they are either your primary or secondary flower spawn. Your primary spawn is the type of flower your home island spawns with. Your secondary spawn is the one that is always in your shop and can be found on island tours. Now I do not have roses as my primary or secondary uh, flower. My primary flower was wind flowers and my secondary flower was the hyathens. I don't have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right, but the tall flowers basically. So I would not be able to find these orange roses on a random generated island. And you go to these islands by using your nook miles to buy a ticket and then take a plane to a random island. As you can see, if you do find these flowers in game, you will have a 6% chance of being able to create a hybrid blue rose and a 12% chance of creating a hybrid red rose. And you can use two hybrid red roses from these island orange roses to get a 25% chance of getting a blue rose. And if you take a moment to look at this chart, you'll figure out um, all the different patterns and the different percentages. Okay, and one of the last guides that I want to go over today is basically a more detailed version of the first guide and it goes over every single flower and their percentages on how to get them. So if we look at the wind flower, you'll see that planting a red flower from seed and an orange flower from seed will give you a 100% chance of getting a pink flower. If you plant a white flower from seed and another white flower from seed and you place them together, you'll have a 25% chance of getting a blue wind flower. I'd also like to point out that those with a yellow background are going to be your hybrid flowers, which you'll need to use to create things like this purple wind flower, which requires hybrids to spawn in game. And there are also some island flowers like these blue hyathens here, which can create purple flowers. And it says here at the bottom right hand corner, this guide was made using data mined data. So it's 100% accurate. Data mined by Elter and visuals peach and key and I apologize again for mispronouncing things my English is not very good and yes it is my first language but I am not good at speaking it also it says down here hybrid red roses from this method only have a 50 50 chance of being able to produce blue roses the ones that work will only have a 1.6 percent chance when watering or breeding blue roses so if you want 100% accuracy when using these guides, be sure that you read the small print because there's a lot of extra information about breeding flowers. Uh, it's a lot more complicated than what you just see on the surface. Okay, and then real quick, I have a couple more things I wanna go over. I want to mention real quick, if you want a gold rose, uh, you will need a golden watering can. The golden watering can can water more flowers at once except when you're watering black roses and you water the black roses to get the gold roses. Now to get the golden watering can, you need to get a five star rating in your town and then you will need to craft the DIY recipe for the golden watering can. Uh, real quick, I wanna talk about chain breeding, which I found from this article here from GameSpot and it says that flowers in New Horizons utilize Mendelian, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, genetics, the kind you learn in basic biology. That means flowers have recessive and dominant genes, and these genes determine what color the flower is. In some cases, two or more different combinations of genes can result in the same color flower, which is where chain breeding, the process by which you breed flowers. Then take the flowers you've bred and then breed them to get another color. Luckily, every flower that comes from a seed bag has the exact same genes, which standardizes things. For example, you can breed basic red pansies, the kind you plant from a seed bag, with blue pansies to get more red pansies. However, the red pansies you get from these red-blue combos have different genes than the red pansies you get from seed bags. Even though they look the same, they're often called hybrid red, 
while the normal ones are called seed red. Because of the genetic difference, you can breed two hybrid red pansies together to get purple, but you can't get purple pansies from seed red pansies at all. In order to breed purple pansies, you have to keep track of which reds are from seed bags and which are from breeding with blue pansies. Now real quick, I wanna talk about bushes and the lily of the valley. So bushes you get from this little guy, uh, I forget his name at the moment, I'll put his name on screen, and they are like a mixture of trees and flowers. They grow in four days, and each bush will only bloom during certain times of the month. So chamomile, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm sorry, I'm so bad at these names, is from early February to late March, azalea mid-April to late May, hibiscus early June to mid-June, hydrangea late June to mid-September, tea olive late September to late October, holly early November to late December. Bushes can be planted next to other bushes, watering sources, cliffs, and buildings. Keep in mind that bushes cannot be grown or placed on the beach. They take three days to grow to full size. And then once at full size, their flower takes one day to bloom if they are in season. And you cannot crossbreed bushes, nor can you pick the flowers off of bushes. They are mainly just there for decoration and can act sort of like a hedge. And of course, lastly, the lily of the valley. The lily of the valley is a flower that only starts to grow on your island when the player has an island rating of five stars, the highest it can go. It's also important to note that previous games had a different flower called the Jacob's Ladder, but that's been replaced by the lily of the valley. Once your island rating is at five stars, there's a small chance each day that you'll start to see lily of the valley flowers growing around your island. They're presented as slender, drooping plants with white flowers, like a pale version of a bluebell. Don't be impatient though, as even with five stars, they grow at a very slow rate, around one per week, depending on how lucky you are. And I believe that is pretty much everything you need to know about flowers. And I will of course be putting links to all of these websites I've used in the description below as well as a couple others that I thought were interesting or went into even more detail about how the flowers coding and percentages work. That's all for now. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye!